Cleanse my guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you You know, recently we uh, shared a dream uh, that was given to Eve concerning her um, climbing to the top floor of the white building. And um, the Davids were in the top floor in the dream, and, um, and she was cleansing herself on the way up to go to the uh, top floor. And um, she saw, saw a room of people that were listening to David, who was broadcasting the word, and um, the people got unrested, um, agitated, um, saying that they didn't want to hear this anymore. At first, they were very happy; they didn't want to hear this anymore, and then they were gone. And Eve made the point a couple times there that the only one left on that floor was the Davids and herself representing the bride. The only one left on Mount Zion, you might say, is the bride and the man-child. That's the top floor. That's the head of the nation of New Testament spiritual Israel, right? So what about the rest of the folks? You know, I mean, it looked like there was a people that were prepared uh, to go there, but they, you know, gave up the fight at the last minute and became, I would say, factious or critical or, or just not wanting to go where the flesh didn't want to go, you know, just self-willed. So anyway, day four yesterday, I asked the Lord for a word, and I got this, Jeremiah 39. I'm going to start reading in um, verse 8. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the residue or the remnant of the people that remained in the city. The deserters also that fell away to him, that is to uh, Babylon, to the beast, uh, and the residue of the people that remained. So he carried away the people out of their promised land, out of their proper place with God, out of the position where God was at, at their center, and uh, the beast carried them away. Now who is the beast? Well, the beast is not only the headship, the leadership over the beast, but also the body of seven heads and ten horns, which we found out was all nations of people who are uh, either lost or walking after the flesh. Because it really don't make any difference. If you walk after the flesh, you must die. But the flesh basically is the beast, the body of the beast. And um, like when Israel was um, in Egypt, you know, the beast ruled over them. The old man ruled over them. And when they went through the Red Sea, of course, the old man was put to death in the waters of the word. And the Israelite came up on the other side. A baptism, Paul called it, right? So this beast is making war against you every day. That flesh, who is a part of the one world beast, is the enemy of God, the Bible says, and is against God and is fighting against you every day, wants to conquer you. And the devil uses that flesh. The spirits that come up out of the pit, uh, who are who is the corporate body of the spirit of the beast, inhabits the body of the beast, which is worldwide, to conquer the saints, to make war on the saints. So your flesh can conquer you quite quickly and easily if you let it. You have authority over it. You can win, but you have to fight. If you're not going to fight, you're going to lose. And you have to fight according to the rules. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the helmet of salvation, which we talked about 
uh, in our last broadcast, which I suggest everybody listen to, because it'll just let you know that you are you are saved, you know, from the beast. And so, reading on in verse ten, it said, "But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left off left of the poor of the people that had nothing. They didn't have any possession in uh, in corporate." corrupt leadership of Jerusalem. Uh, that was the people that were carried away. The whole leadership was carried away. These people had no part in that. They were the poor of the people that had nothing in the land of Judah. And gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. He gave them the promised land. He gave them the promised land. It was theirs to begin with. Because you know who the poor are? Well, let me just say this. In Matthew 5 and 3, we're told, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, this is a spiritual revelation, so poor in spirit fits pretty good. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's just saying that they possess the kingdom of heaven. They don't just dwell there. They possess the kingdom of heaven. Okay, well, we also know from, uh, for instance, uh, Isaiah chapter 65 and verse uh, 9, it says, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. Notice, Judas is the inheritor. Judah is the inheritor of the mountain. And my chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. So there are people that are dwelling in the promised land, but um, they don't own it. There is a joint heir, and the joint heir, of course, is the bride. And uh, actually, in Esther 5 and 3, we're told the same thing. The king... The king of kings uh, said to Esther, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? What is thy request? And it shall be given thee even to the half of the kingdom. She was a joint heir. The queen is a joint heir with the king, right? Uh, Not everybody is a joint heir. We've all been given that position in Christ, but we don't all attain to that position in Christ. You understand? Uh, So, and notice it was Esther 5 and 3 and Matthew 5 and 3. Very interesting. Same verse. Okay, so let me go back and read the rest of the text there. And then we'll go on. Now, Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. So uh, the king of Babylon showed favor to, I would say, Jeremiah here as a type of the man-child, just as he showed favor, the king uh, showed favor to Joseph in Egypt, uh, Daniel in Babylon. Uh, There's a common type there. Why? Well, he told them the truth. He told them that the king of Babylon was going to come and conquer them. They told them the same thing, and it was because of their sins. If you walk in sin, you're going to be conquered by the beast, and you're going to be taken out of your land. That is the land of promise. You stand on the land of promise, and God gives it to you. The Word of God, by the way, in a way, is the land of promise, the promised land. When you stand on any of this word, God gives it to you. In other words, it's a walk of faith. It's a walk of having the promises to be yours, right? Take take him and look well to him and do him no harm. And do whatever he tells you. So, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent and and, um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Rabsaris, and Nergal Shazrir, uh, Rabmag 
and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon, they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the guard and committed him unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, and he that he should carry him home. So he dwelt among the people. So there's two people. There is the poor of the people, which I'm going to call the bride because they're joint heirs with Christ, as we saw. They inherit the land. It belongs to them. And uh, they are also poor in spirit. They're not proud in spirit or puffed up in spirit or arrogant in spirit. They're humble to the word of God. And the man-child, the bride and the man-child, are going to be who is left in the land. You see that? Wow, pretty neat. Okay, so what's going to happen to the rest of this, this remnant of the people that are being carried away? Uh, and why are they being carried away? Well, they, they stumble at the stone of stumbling and rock of offense, you know. They stumbled at the word being disobedient, according to what Peter said, and uh, whereunto they were appointed. You know, the stone of stumbling has become the head of the corner. Let's look back at uh, Esther, and let's see. In Esther, um, the beast also was conquering the saints. Now, I not only received that word there in Isaiah, I received this word in Esther chapter 4. I'll just read a part of it to you, and then I'm going to go back and get the text out of it for you. It says, um, verse 4, chapter 4 and verse 1, Now when Mordecai knew all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And he came even before the king's gate, for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Now, what were they crying about? Well, they were crying about the edict that Haman had received, the head of the beast, Haman, the head of the beast body, that edict that he had received. Uh, to destroy the people of God. He received authority from the king of kings to make war against the people of God. Is this still true today? Absolutely. The beast has authority to make war against you. If you don't fight, if you don't use the authority that he has given to you, you will lose. People are losing because they're stumbling at the word being disobedient. Let me go on and share what I see here in Esther. I'll just back up to, let's say, verse 13 of chapter 3. The letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all Jews. Of course, we know that those who are circumcised in heart are Jews nowadays, according to what was told to the Apostle Paul and what he told the people. Both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. And a copy of the writing that the decree should be given out in every province was published unto all the peoples, that they should be ready against that day. Ready for what? Ready to slaughter the Jews, right? That is the beast body, ready to make war against the Jews. And the biggest thing that was making war against the Jews when this edict went out was their flesh. The posts went forth in haste by the king's commandment, and the decree was given out in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. So, and then Esther and her maidens went into grieving and so on and so forth, and there was a great cry that went up concerning this edict, this authority that was given to the beast to make war on the saints. Do you know yet that God is the only one that has any authority? 
The devil only gets his from God or he gets it from you, one or the other, because you have been given authority over the devil and over all the power of the enemy, as Luke chapter 10 tells us very plainly. So we have to be careful not to give the devil authority because he can kill you. We need to be careful not to give the flesh any authority because it can cause you to die. If you walk after the flesh, you must die. You'll lose your battle with the beast if you give authority to the flesh. And so, Mordecai decided, since Esther was um, the queen and had authority with the king, uh, to tell her to go and make request to the king for the people. Right? That's interesting. Why, why all the cry? Is there no king in thee? <laughs> this is a word honestly this is a word I received just a couple of days ago it's amazing all of this fits together uh, anybody that can say that's an accident is very foolish uh, Micah chapter 4 and verse 9 says now why dost thou cry out loud I received that is there no king in thee is thy counselor perished that pangs have taken hold of thee as a woman in travail? Interesting. The woman is in travail with the man-child, who we know to be Mordecai too, a type and shadow. Uh, but they're crying, and he's saying, Hey, you cry like you don't even have a king, like you've been given no authority like you don't know the Word of God. And it goes on to say, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and shalt dwell in the field, and shalt come even unto Babylon. There shalt thou be rescued. There will the Lord redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. What is it to be redeemed from the hand of your enemies? It's to be bought and taken. Who Did anybody pay for that? Yes, the Lord paid for us to have authority over our enemies. That to be delivered out of the power of our enemies. And now many nations are assembled against thee that say, and this is the beast, many nations is the beast, the body of the beast, that say, let her be defiled. Let our eyes see our desire upon Zion. They wanted to conquer the people of God like they do today. Can you see it? Can you see it rising up out there? Not only that, your own flesh wants to conquer you because it don't want to go to the cross and it don't want to die. So it wants to conquer you. So it's a, an enemy in your camp. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. See, is there no counselor? Why are you crying? Is there no counselor in you? Did your counselor perish? Neither understand they his counsel, for he hath gathered them, that is the beast, as the sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. So I say to you, arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. It's the beast that's going to be threshed, right? They don't even understand their own counsel. They, they cry like they don't understand that God has given them authority. For I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many peoples, and I will devote their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. And he goes on to say, Now shalt thou gather thyself in troops, daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. That is, that is the man-child, and it's also Jesus. And it's Jesus in the man-child. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, which art little... In other words, he goes on to talk about... Uh, a ruler coming forth in Israel, who was Jesus and is also the man-child. And, and he said that he would give them up until she who travaileth hath brought forth, there it is, verse 3, 
So we are in this time, and then he will stand and feed his flock in what? The man child. Uh, so they're crying out as though they haven't heard the word of God. They haven't received the counsel of God, the understanding of God. And so was Esther, and so was the people of God, and so was Mordecai at that time. And so Mordecai counseled Esther to go and talk to the king. And uh, she agreed. <laughs> uh, after a fashion, she agreed. Um, she hesitated, but agreed. And, uh, you know, all we got to do is talk to the king. You know, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe in, you shall receive, right? We have to talk to the king, but we have to know what our counselor has counseled. The Lord Jesus said that, Mark 11 and 24, and Mark 11 and 23, to speak to the mountain and don't doubt, you know. He gave us all these awesome commands of authority. And the people of God, you know, those two texts that I received, which are very similar, um, and they're both confirming one another, and here in Esther, same thing. Um, are confirming that the people of God need to understand what the Lord has said concerning the attack of the beast. They have authority. Who inherited the land? The poor of the land. The people who had no inheritance in uh, original apostate Jerusalem, which is falling away, being taken captive into all the world. Right? But they will receive their inheritance, right? So Esther uh, was counseled by Mordecai to go and speak to the king. Petition the king, right? And so I'm going to read down in 5 and 3. It says, Then said the king unto her, Wilt thou, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? And it shall be given to thee even unto the half of the kingdom. So uh, she had authority with the king. He told her so. She was a joint heir. He told her so. Um, and Esther said, If it seemed good to the king, uh, let the king and Haman come to this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Let's have a party. I, I bet Mordecai was saying, Just ask him. <laughs> but, but, but she said, uh, uh, Let's have a party. Um and then the king said, um, Cause Haman to make haste, that it may be done as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? Here he goes again, asking her again, What's your petition? It shall be granted unto thee. It's like uh, having trouble getting the bride even. To understand that she needs to ask and believe she's re going to receive here, you know. Um, Mark 11 and 24. What's thy petition? It shall be granted unto thee. What is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom shall it be performed. He's trying to uh, confirm to her mind, you know, that, hey, just ask. But no, she's she's dallying around here, uh, a little bit embarrassed, a little uh, slow to, to ask and know that she has... Um, her request granted already, like the Lord said. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I found favor in, thy, in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and uh, to perform my request, uh, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I have prepared for them. What? What? Another party? Uh, come on now. Uh just ask the king. Is she having trouble getting it out or what? Then I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. She is really dilly-dallying around here, ain't she? So, anyway, after this, as you remember, the king woke up a sleepless night found out that Mordecai had saved his neck, uh, honored him, caused Haman, who, who was, you know, really having a fit about it, 
uh, to ride Mordecai through the streets with royal apparel and um, that the king wore and um, the king's horse and uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and of course I believe that this is happening I believe the beast is trying to devour the man child at this time the Lord has shown us that pretty plainly and um, but failing uh, but also taking out many of the man child's contemporaries in this day uh, just as um, Herod did back in the time of Jesus and so before that next banquet uh, these things were happening and I think this is where we are today is these things is that God is causing the beast through a crucifixion process to uh, put royal apparel on the man child which is what Mordecai means uh, little boy right uh, or little man in another another um, language so he is um, rising up here so let's go to seven and one so the king and Haman came to the banquet finally uh, again with Esther the queen you know while the people of God have a threat of death on them at the hands of the beast uh, she's having trouble getting this out okay and the king said again to Esther on the second day of the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom shall it be performed. So she finally gets up the nerve to, to spit it out here, you know. Um, then Esther the queen answered and said, If I found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be granted me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my peace, although the adversary could not have compensated the king's damage. Then spake King Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he? that durst presume in his heart to do so. And uh, Esther said, An adversary and an enemy. You know, adversary is the word for Satan, isn't it? And an enemy, even this wicked Haman. So uh, Haman just about swallowed his tongue when this happened. And, um, you know, um, the king wandered out thinking about what can I do to Haman, you know, and uh, of course what finally happened was Harbona suggested to him uh, the gallows that was 50 feet high that he had already prepared for Mordecai and so the king said hang him on it and he did the head of the beast not the body the body already had its instructions now and that was to wipe out the Jews make war on the Jews so um, the Lord the the king of kings here, of course, represents our king of kings. And uh, he literally was the king of kings. He had conquered the known world at the time, and they were all under his authority. So, um, in that Middle Eastern area, you know. And at that day, um, Ahasuerus gave the house of Ammon the Jews unto Esther, the queen. See, he gave her authority over the beast. Okay? And I'm going to start in verse 5 of chapter 8. It says, And she said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in thy sight, and the things seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes. Come on, come on, come on, Esther, get it out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> We're in a hurry here, right? Uh, let it be written, to reverse the letters devised by Haman, of the son of Havanatha, the Agagite, uh, which he wrote to destroy the Jews that are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the queen 
um, Esker, the house of Haman, and um, him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also uh, to the Jews, as it pleaseth you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. So, you know what? The king gave his authority unto them. Uh, the, what he was trying to do before was to give her authority and, and do whatever she wanted. They were asking the king to do this, and the king said, No, you have to do this. I've given you authority to do this. Now, everybody's crying to the king, but the king has delegated his authority. Do you remember that? Well, uh, just for instance, uh, Luke 10 and 17 says, And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us by thy name, in thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan fallen as lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall in any wise hurt you. Nevertheless, in this rejoice not that your, the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Been given authority. So, God's saying, I'm not going to do it. I delegated my authority to you. Now you do it, or it won't get done. Obviously, a lot of people aren't fighting. Uh, they're just losing. They're just losing the battle. Their demons and their flesh are taking them out. The remnant is uh, being taken to Babylon. The remnant of those who stumble at the word being disobedient. You know, there was the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense. The, the, the stone which the builders rejected all throughout history. There's been the stone that the builders rejected. The prophets, Jesus, Jesus in the prophets, by the way, and Jesus in the man child is the uh, stone that the builders rejected. It had to happen to fulfill Scripture. It had to happen. And it's happening today. And so, he delegated his authority to his people. Uh, Jesus, the stone that the builders rejected, delegated his authority to the people there in Luke 10. And so, Hosphorus, who is the king of kings here, is saying, no, I delegate this authority unto you. You have to use it. Then were the king's scribes called at that time, Esther 8 and 9, in the third month, uh, which is the month Sivan, on three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the satraps, and the governors and princes uh, of the princes of the provinces which are from India to Ethiopia, a hundred and twenty and seven provinces. Um, unto every province according to the writing thereof, unto every people after their language, because this is something that's going on around the world, folks. It's a world beast. It's a world uh, Israel. It's a world bride. It's all around the world. And to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And, of course, we know that the Bible has gone forth into all the languages of the world, right? He wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed it with the king's ring. He had authority. He had the authority Haman had. Haman had authority to make war on the saints, and the king wouldn't reverse it. He told the people, you better do it. I gave you authority. And sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post on horseback, riding on swift steeds that were used in the king's service, bread of the stud wherein the king granted the Jews that were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life. So you have to stand for your spiritual life, saints. If you don't do it, they'll take you out. 
to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and the province that would assault them, their little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar. And a copy of the writing that the decree should be given out in every province was published unto all the peoples, that the Jews should be ready against the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon uh, the posts that rode upon swift steeds that were used in the king's service went out. Okay, they took the word out to everybody. Stand for your life. Notice the king wouldn't do it. He had given them authority. If they didn't believe it, well, then they weren't believers. And a lot of people today are discouraged, and they're fighting with their old flesh and fighting with the demons and other people. Um, the beast is making war on the saints. And all the spirits who are uh, a corporate body that inhabit the body of the beast, all the Jezebel spirits and all the factious spirits and all the uh, all the demons are making war against the saints to take them into captivity to the beast. That was the plan. And, uh, of course, Mordecai went forth from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a robe of fine linen. I'm I'm suspecting that the end of this thing will be at the time when the man-child is anointed and given authority. Okay, and I suspect we're very close to that because I'm seeing uh, a remnant of people out there struggling and striving to be free from their flesh and um, persecuted by other wicked people. And, uh, you know, the Lord said he was going to remove out of his kingdom all them that caused stumbling and that uh, did offense. He said he was going to remove them out of his kingdom, and he is doing that. So make sure you're sticking with the word, saints. It is your sword of the Spirit. It is your counsel from God. Don't ignore your counsel. Is your counselor perished? Do you cry as though you don't have a king? Um, Well, the king has given the rules out, and he has spoken, and it is the truth. Amen? Ain't God awesome? (laughs) So, So then again... You know, the, the, on that day, the Jews stood for their lives and conquered their enemies. And uh, chapter 9 and verse 15, And the Jews that were in Chushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month Adar, and slew three hundred men in Shushan, but on the spoil they laid not their hand. And the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew of them that hated them seventy and five thousand. But on the spoil they laid not their hands. And, of course, they had a big celebration. They called it Purim, you know, uh, because Haman had cast a lot, purr, uh, to destroy the people of God. And um, they made it a celebration from then on. Notice, they won because they took the authority that the king gave them and came against their enemies. They won. Today, I believe that what Eve's dream was speaking about was just exactly what's been happening. And uh, there was a timing on that a month after she had the dream. And about that time, a lot of people started having problems and started having to fight with their flesh. And so I'm hearing about it, you know, from different quarters, you know, of out there in, in uh, UBM and, 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 and locally, too. And so, you know what? You have to fight. You have to take authority. You have to believe the Word of God. You have to believe the counsel that was given to you. You have to believe the King. If you believe the king, that you've been given authority over all the power of the enemy, then fight. We don't fight with flesh and blood. It's the principalities and powers that are using the flesh and blood. The devil and his demons will use your flesh. The devil and his demons will use the flesh of the world. They'll do anything to make you frustrated 
uh, and give up and throw up your hands, you know, as though you don't have authority, right? Not good, not good at all. You know, um, I'm going to read this to you in um, Job 33. Uh, verse 19 on down says, He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and with continual strife in his bones, so that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty food. His uh, flesh is consumed away that it cannot see, be seen, and his bones that are not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the pit and his life to the destroyers. You remember you have a Passover from the destroyers, right? If there be with him an angel or a messenger, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man what is right for him, then God is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. You know, a ransom is the price that was paid in order for you to be redeemed, right? We have found a ransom. It's Jesus Christ. He has borne the curse upon himself, and we have been redeemed, right? His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He returneth to the days of his youth. He prayeth unto God, and he is favorable unto him, so that he seeth his face with joy, and he restoreth unto man his righteousness. Uh, he singeth before men, and saith, I have sinned and perverted that which was right. So in other words, here's somebody that is confessing their sin, right? They're not denying it. They're not justifying themselves. And it profited me not. He hath redeemed my soul from going into the pit, and my life uh, shall behold the light. Well, Amen. And uh, I'm also thinking about uh, Psalm 69:17. It says, "And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in distress. Answer me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Ransom me because of mine enemies." Yep, the old man, the flesh, doesn't want to die. It'll do anything to destroy you. Don't give in to it. Don't listen to it. I received a word uh, today in um, Psalm 72 and verse 6. He will come down like the rain upon the mown grass. Why are you going through all this crucifixion at the hand of your flesh and at the hand of the, the worldly people? Um, he said the mown grass. He's coming down. No, the Lord will come down. Like the rain. How did he say he was going to come in Hosea chapter 6? 2 and 3. He was going to come like the latter rain. And when did he say he was going to come at the end of chapter 5 there in Hosea? When the people cried out to him. When they were ready. When they were repentant. He will come down like the rain. The latter rain. Upon the mown grass. That's the flesh cut down. The flesh humbled as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace until the moon be no more. And, you know, that's what the Lord gave me. And then I just glanced across the page and I saw um, 71 and 20. Thou who hast showed us many and sore troubles will quicken us again. That's make us alive again. That's what his outpouring of his spirit does, you know. And will bring us up again from the depths of the earth. A resurrection of types, right? We go through death, burial, and resurrection, do we not? And that's how we come into the likeness of Jesus Christ. But from the beginning we can reckon ourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. You see, your struggling is against sin, and your giving up on God and uh, your rebellion is uh, sin that dwells in your members. And the Lord has given us victory over that. If you didn't listen to our last message, please go back and listen to it. 
It's a, a way of victory over your flesh, right? He will bring us up again from the depths of the earth. Increase thou my greatness, and turn again, and comfort me. I will also praise thee with a psaltery. This is a powerful thing to do. Praise God. When you know what God has given unto you, praise Him for it, even before you see it, right? Even thy truth, O my God, unto thee will I sing praises with the harp. O thou Holy One of Israel, my lips shall shout for joy when I sing praises unto thee and my soul, which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, and they are put to shame, for they are confounded that seek my hurt. They're confounded. When you praise God for his promises, you stand on his promises, you're going to see the victory, folks. Just give thanks unto God and know that he's given you authority to say no to the devil, no to the flesh, no to your enemy. Know it. Understand it. Believe it. Study the word. Study the word of God. Let Be encouraged by the word of God. It will give you the victory. You know, I received a uh, an email this morning uh, from a brother named Tim. I won't give you his last name because I, I don't want to reveal something he might not want me to be revealed. But um, he said, uh, Dear Pastor Eels, last night, or more likely this morning, uh, I had a rather strange dream. I fell asleep listening to your 427 semi-weekly Bible study. It keeps relooping and playing over and over. <clears throat> Perhaps my subconscious mind was picking up on some of the podcasts. It was about holy living, flesh versus spirit, etc. Anyway, here's what I dreamed. I dreamed <clears throat> that my sister and I, she is my biological sister as well as my sister in the Lord, received a large cardboard box in the mail from a Christian ministry. I opened my box and found a large chunk of raw ground beef. It was still semi-fresh, but I thought it curious that they would send something so easily decomposable uh, via snail mail. I knew the meat could soon rot and be of no value unless I cooked it immediately. In other words, you had to eat it quick, right? Eat it while it was fresh and, and so on. I started to pull the meat away and discovered that a, a yellow bunch of bananas was concealed within. The ground beef was on and between the bananas, fully concealing them, almost like muscle on and around ribs. I separated the ground beef from the bananas and put the beef in a, a white electric slow cooker on the floor. It heated up and started cooking the ground beef. So then he was asking for an interpretation. And I, I sent him this. I said, Hi, Tim, I think you are receiving the meat and the fruit of our ministry. The meat is not the milk, but the solid food for those who need to grow up. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. And Jesus also said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. See, milk is not necessarily to do anything, but the meat is to not only receive the knowledge of the truth, uh, but also do it. And I went on to say, The fruit is the ability to walk in righteous acts of Christ, which uh, knowledge of the word gives. Both of these are perishable just as the manna that came down from heaven to the Israelites. If they stored it up, instead of consuming it, uh, it spoiled quickly. God said that he was proving them to see if they would walk in his word by this command to eat a day's portion every day. Once it's spoiled, it's gone. You can't go back and get that day's food for the soul tomorrow. Redeem the time. In other words, saints, uh, 
your spiritual man's got to be fed just like your flesh has got to be fed to stay alive. Your spiritual man needs to stay alive. You've got to feed him the Word of God. It's the Word made flesh. The Word is our counsel. The Word is our faith. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word. The Word does uh, uh, puts on the armor, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith. The Word puts on the armor. You need to be defended in this battle with the beast. You're going to lose if you go and fritter away your time instead of redeeming the time with useless, worthless things of this world. Get the Word in your heart and do it daily. Don't save up any of it for tomorrow because what you were supposed to eat today to make you strong is going to be useless if you do that. You don't leave any of it until the morning. Everything that they left until the morning, corrupted. It was gone. Okay. So what the Lord is saying? He said he was going to try them to see if they would keep his word. And he gave them this commandment. You eat a day's portion every day. Well, if you eat a day's portion of God's word, is he not going to be able to try you to see if you're going to keep the word of God? There's two things there. Number one, he commanded them to eat a day's portion every day. Well, that was a trial in itself. But also, when you eat the Word, it's a trial to see if you're going to keep the Lord's Word. You know, you know they stumbled at the Word being disobedient whereunto they were appointed. The people that stumble and fall out of the bride were not appointed to be in the bride in the first place. I'm just telling you, you have a part in this. The Lord is your counselor. He's given you counsel. He's given you authority over your enemies. You must use that authority. Or the devil will win the battle and you'll be gone. You'll be one of those people that complained and murmured. You remember when they murmured and he had a solution for them. The Lord had a solution for their murmuring. His solution was... You eat this manna. Eat the manna. It's the solution. Don't leave any of it until the morning. It was the same as the Passover. In the Passover, they were to eat the lamb. Don't leave any of it until the morning. And you'd have a Passover of the destroyer. There's a destroyer out there that wants to destroy you. By the way, The Lord came with the destroyer. He said, I won't let him come into your house if you have the blood on the doorposts and if you've eaten all the lamb. He said, I won't let him come into your house and destroy you. This is just exactly like Ahasuerus giving authority unto the beast to make war on the saints. The destroyer is there to take out those that are disobedient to God. If you're going to be disobedient, if you're going to think you're wiser than God's Word and you won't submit to His words of command, especially commands of relationship to others, of forgiveness of others, and a blessing to others, and giving what you want to receive back, giving it will be given unto you, right? If you don't obey God's commands, the beast is going to take you out. Your flesh will be bigger than you. And nobody wants to see that. So, humble yourself to the Lord God. Seek Him every day. Know that you have authority over the beast. He's making war against your flesh. He wants to take you down. He wants to rule over you. Just like the king of Babylon and his people ruled over those people who rebelled against the Lord and did not obey His word He took them out of their land of promise where they stood upon the promises of God. He took them over there and they were ruled over by the flesh in Babylon. You're being ruled over by your flesh? It's because you're disobeying the word. You're paying no attention. You don't know you have any authority. You don't swing the sword of the spirit. You don't have the shield of faith. You don't have the helmet of salvation. And he will cave your head in. (laughs) 
So fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on life eternal. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord, that you have given us your counsel and you've given us your authority, just like the King of Kings gave unto the bride authority to say no, to stand for their lives. And the bride passed it on to the people. You can stand for your lives. You can stand for your lives. You don't have to be taken out. Father, we thank you for doing this for your people. Thank you for the authority you've given unto your people, Lord. Now, Lord, I ask you to fill everybody that's listening with faith and boldness that they will speak the commands to the kingdom of Satan, to the flesh, to the principalities and powers, that they will speak the commands that they will forbid what needs to be forbidden. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Let them forbid. Let them bind the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that use people against them and their flesh against them. Let it be done in the name of Jesus. can quench my thirsting soul Pure as water make me whole let your streams of mercy flow, oh Jesus, I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus, I trust in you.